This is Jason Marsden, the voice of Duke from G.I. Joe Renegades. You're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Yo, Joe. You're tuned in to Steve Megatron on Altered Geek. Hello and welcome to Altered Geek. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips. Today, I'd like to welcome to the program Fraser Rice, producer, writer, author, podcast host, Marvel Comics and Movie fan. Welcome. Jack of all trades, master of none. That's me. <laughs> I think that's a little bit of everybody. It really is. I mean, I think most of us who grew up uh, consuming a lot of culture were trying to figure out how to use it. <laughs> and so you end up uh, trying to put it in your uh, in your careers in some ways, and then you know you get frustrated with that, so you try to have an outlet somewhere. Which is awesome to have. Yeah, well, it, it's if you don't have it, you go crazy. So, uh, uh, and it's nice when you're just getting inundated with a lot of data and uh, images and things like that to be able to, you know, look back into kinder, gentler times and make sense of it. Yeah, essentially a nice brain dump that you can kind of go back and revisit later. That's for sure. So, could you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself so that uh, they can know a little bit about you? Sure. So I'm in my mid 40s uh, and I grew up a nerd and sort of kept with it. Um, I uh, ended up becoming a lawyer and a banker. And so I do a lot of work uh, advising wealthy people about their taxes and finances and things like that. Uh, at the same time, I kept it up as far as uh, a lot of creative ventures. I had a radio show in high school and a TV show in college, and I really liked all of that. Uh, I worked in politics right out of college, and so I got to sort of scratch that itch professionally a little bit, but I wanted to make some more money, and I went sort of the law school route and then ultimately to banking. But I never really lost the uh, the uh, sort of media and cultural components that I really liked, and I've been just trying to figure out how to involve that more in my career and also just to uh, just to enjoy the things that I like reading and doing. So uh, what the forms that have taken uh, over the last few years, I've been involved with uh, a small graphic novel called Death Cat that I co-wrote with a good friend of mine Uh, that led to. Uh, hopefully the near completion of a 100-page graphic novel called Stay Alive that we're hoping to put out uh, probably in in the spring. Uh, we have a cool artist who has done some work for Marvel in D.C. named Stephen Baskerville, and uh, he's based in Bath, England, and it's been just one of the coolest experiences ever. Uh, I do podcasting, so I interview a lot of uh, artists, entrepreneurs, experts, things like that, uh, and hear their story. Uh, most recently, I talked to a woman named Story Jones, who has a uh, a website that helps people navigate the divorce process. And uh, the next one is going to be with a fellow by the name of John Farr, who uh, has presided over the rebirth of the Bedford Village Playhouse, which is an old movie theater. So that's going to be really neat. And I grew up watching a lot of movies there. So it's going to be fun to hear uh, how the movie theater, which went down and uh, went out of business, has kind of come back to be a real cultural center in the town. Um, uh, what else have I done? I just came out with my first book, Wealth Actually, uh, in August, which is in the wealth management space, which is my day job. And, uh, yeah, so I, I just keep it going. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely important to keep busy and, and it sounds like you do that. <laughs> Well, it's just fun, you know. I, 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 you know, it's one thing to keep busy when it's slavery or drudgery and that type of thing. That's that's not great. But when you're doing things that you enjoy and you're you're part of a creative process, it's uh, it's really neat. And um, you know, when you're able to have the resources to be able to to do certain things and to uh, sort of indulge yourself, it's a lot of fun. So, what are what are some of your your favorite uh, roles that you currently play? Whether it's it's being the writer or the um, producer of the, the graphic novels or, or being a, a podcast host yourself? Uh, you know what? I, I like little parts about all of it. I think I'm naturally better at the writing end of things. Um, I just, I, I have to do it all the time in the day job. And I think, you know, widely read and lots of different influences. And so I like the writing component. Uh, I think the business aspect of me, I think I'm useful in terms of getting projects up and running and, and moving forward and hopefully done. Uh, so the production part is, is cool. Uh, I'm the co-producer of a horror movie actually called the restaurant, 
which is pretty neat. Um, and uh, it's funny that I, uh, a friend of mine was directing it and he was trying to raise some money and was asking me how to go about that. And so I was useful and I, he said, would you like to be a part of it? And I said, sure, but the uh, I'll only do it if I'm the first person killed. So I, <laughs> I, I ended up on the, uh, it, it's the, the, if you go into the trailer for the restaurant, which is on YouTube, uh, and it's hopefully coming out in March, uh, got a deal for it done. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in a chair about to be gored by demons. And so that was really fun. Kind of my, my first IMDB credit, uh, it was a lot of, it, it was great, but you know what? I, I do things that, that I enjoy doing and I just make a point of carving out time during the day and, and it gets, it keeps my pilot light on and I like it and you never know what, where it's going to lead. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It, like doing this, I've, I've gotten to meet a lot of amazing people just through doing a podcast and, and just talking about things that I enjoy that other people enjoy as well. And so it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, about scratching that itch and, and kind of discovering what you like to do and, and doing a little, trying a little bit of everything. Well, and the cultural stuff's interesting too. I, I, it's amazing. You know, I play golf and do all sorts of other things, but you know, if you're able to connect with people on the cultural part, there, there's, there's a real, uh, connection that happens that is powerful and, and it gets things done. I, I was on Twitter and there's a pretty famous billionaire named Cliff Asnes, uh, who has a Twitter feed and I, we connected over Jack Kirby art, of which he is a huge fan and I am too. And, you know, I, we're not friends. We've never really even met, but, but we have, we do share something and, and it's cool. It's, you know, and it, it, you know, this is a guy that wouldn't know me from, uh, from Adam and, uh, it's just a nice thing to share even a very minor way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always fun discovering who you end up bumping into and in, in just random conversation, whether it's through social media or just in other means. No, oh, it's, it's actually frightening. I, I think just between, you know, people from past lives that show up in your orbits through social media, but then also, you know, in the Twitterverse, you know, depending on what you like or don't like, and uh, the, the, these things catch up to you for better or worse. And, and at least in my case, it's been for better. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, definitely for better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned the, the graphic novels. What, what's what been one of the uh, the fun challenges and, and interesting aspects to, to being involved with that world? So the graphic novel part, uh, just a little bit about the process. So my buddy, uh, Jim Harbison and I, uh, both big culture geeks, comics, horror movies, action films, uh, crazy stuff going, you know, back to the mid eighties, uh, and even beforehand. Um, and so we, we always liked writing together, it had been since high school in some ways, and we drifted apart uh, not, not sort of socially, but just didn't have time to do it. And then we rekindled it about five or six years ago and have had multiple projects. Uh, so one challenge is he lives in Watertown, New York. I live in Manhattan and, you know, a lot of the writing we do is over the phone and, and that's a strange process. Uh, every once in a while, We'll get together in person and uh, but it seems to actually be more productive over the phone but it is tricky because you're you're sort of talking and you have to record things and write them down and at the same time you have to try to uh you know sort of see what the other guy's thinking and that doesn't always work and if you have disagreements and if that collaborative process isn't that smooth which at times it isn't uh you can, it can get very disjointed so that that was challenge one challenge two um was finding an artist uh and especially for the hundred page one we well to go backwards so we started this six page one called death cat which is about a palliative care cat that curls up next to the people who are going to die next in a nursing home, which uh, I thought was a, it's, it's a real life thing. Bingo the cat, I think, was down in Florida, and we thought we could have a tiny little horror concept around it. So we did, and it's funny, and <laughs> we put it out, and uh, we, were, we were trolling around looking for artists. And you know, I went to Comic-Con in New York, and, and one of the both great and kind of sad things is that in the sort of lower level, there's – there are whole football fields full of the most talented people you've ever seen. 
and it, they're not that expensive. Uh, and I'm saying to myself, oh, my God. But I, I'm, I'm looking around there, and I couldn't find anybody who could draw a cat well. And I said, well, that, that, that's a problem because it's called Death Cat. Cat needs to look good. So anyway, we're, we're on the Internet at DeviantArt, and we found a guy, Stephen Baskerville, who drew cats well. So we talked to him, and I should say we didn't even talk to him. I've never spoken to him over the phone. And we he got it, and we sort of we hired him, and it came out well. We'd send things. They'd come back. We might have a couple minor changes, but not, not really. And it's it's been the coolest thing. So we got that done and out there, and – you know, we've had Jim and I have had some screenplays and other writing that we try to figure out what medium to put them in, and you know the movie industry is its whole a whole another Rubik's cube to try to solve. Oh yeah. Um, so I said, you know, we've got this one thing that why don't we try to do a larger graphic novel? And so it's taken over a year. Um, just it's a hundred pages, and it's hard. And you know, Steve over in Bath, England's got to figure out how to do it, but. Slowly but surely, it's 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 coming along, and uh, we're about we're about ninety percent done with it. So it should be we should be ready to go. Um, you know, and it's the type of thing we had this big long script. We got it over to Steve, um, and he just sort of whips things up, and the pages come back. And you know, Jim and I are picky, and we don't have much to pick on. He does a super job, and one of the great things is that he. Uh, he does the pencils, he does the inks, he does the lettering, uh, and he does the colors, which that short circuits the time frame of production by a ton. It also makes it easier for us to manage. And so we're, we're very lucky to have met him. Again, I've never talked to him over the phone, and, it, it's, and he's in Bath, England. And I look at it and I go, what, what a miracle, and that's the internet for you. Um, so then part three, the difficulty is... We're going to have this finished product and we're we're sort of uh, we're looking around for a publisher to, to put it out. And there's lots of different ways you can do that. You can sort of crowdsource a production deal. You can you know send it out to a bunch of people and hope it works. And uh, we've gone a bunch of different ways and we're sort of in the infancy. But we have some interest from some folks. So we're trying to figure out how to how to manage that and what makes sense. But, you know, the goal is let's get this thing published and let's see if we can get it out. And just by doing that, you've, you've done more than 99% of people who've ever dreamt of putting a comic book or a graphic novel out have done. Yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, interesting as far as like how, how you drew it from a, a six, you know, six page story and, and expanded upon it and, and created all that. And plus having, you know, an all in one package with a guy. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that was a miracle uh, because we were really thinking about, you know, how are we going to do this? And we got to find a letterer and, you know, somebody's going to be in California and somebody's going to be in New York. And yeah, how do you get them all to do all that? Steve, Steve was a, we got very, very lucky on that front. So, uh, and it's what's made it a really, really cool experience. I'm, I'm psyched, and it's coming out really well. The, the, the story behind "Stay Alive," which is the hundred-page one, is uh, we have a Lindsay Lohan type character whose uh, sort of media career is falling apart, and she gets on a couple of bad lists as it relates to a uh, uh, sort of this shadowy uh, internet-based serial killer cult. And in order to fight back at that, she joins a reality TV show. And uh, she uh, has to fight her way out of a paper bag as it relates to staying away from one of the major serial killers in California. And while that doesn't sound exactly funny, we mix a lot of horror and comedy and gore and all that fun stuff. So we think that uh, we think we've got something that's uh, it's a lot of fun. The art is so good that I, I feel really good about it. I think the concept is kind of fun and cagey. And, uh, you know, let's see. Let's see how it turns out. Yeah, definitely be interested to see how that looks when it when it comes out. So you'll have to have to let us know. Um, Absolutely. So, since we can clearly tell you have a love of comics and pop culture, uh, what mm -hmm. are some of your favorite Marvel comic book characters that that you relate to or that you just enjoyed? So when I I, I grew up, uh, so I was about seven when the Incredible Hulk TV show was out. Uh, Lou Ferrigno and Bill Bixby and all that. And so I really gravitated toward that. I loved it. I was running around the house, carrying on. I'm sure it drove my parents nuts. 
you know, I was lifting blocks and roaring and doing all that. So I, 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 I liked the Hulk, uh, a lot. And, um, and then as, you know, sort of my palette expanded a little bit, I became a big Spider-Man fan. And then I liked Dr. Strange a lot. Um, I, I had trouble warming up to the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. I liked the villains a lot more than the heroes in that. Um, and I really, I, Daredevil, I, I never quite got into uh, until kind of the Frank Miller years. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think Ground Zero was sort of, uh, uh, it was really the Hulk and then, you know, followed quickly by Spider-Man. Spider-Man, who I think has got one of the real great rogues, uh, you know, rogue galleries uh, in comics. And so, you know, his villains are good, too. Yeah, he's essentially like the, the, the Batman of the Marvel Universe in the sense that he's got this awesome group of villains that he gets to fight. Yeah, and, and so that's where, you know, you get you get uh, somebody like Iron Man, who I think there's a, a lot that's great about that, and Tony Stark and alcoholism, and he's a flawed guy and all that, but his villains are just lame. I You know, the Mandarin's okay, and, uh, you know, Crimson Dynamo and Obadiah Stane and a few others, but after that, it kind of, the blood just drains from the corpse. <laughs> and, 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 and Daredevil suffered from that, too, until later on and and even uh, i don't know and so you're sort of left with some dim people and at the same time i'm 10 and if i'm making judgments about it i if you if people were older and reading that i'm sure they had issues so um and, and, and strange part it, it's funny because like the fantastic four for instance i i had trouble getting into um and uh I, one thing i do credit uh the old sixties Marvel cartoons, the old stop motion ones that were basically the comics with things veering around and with groovy soundtracks and things like that. Those are great. And it's funny that, you know, the, the, my imagination for some reason really got activated. I loved it. And, um, you know, the captain Americas and the, uh, the Thors and, uh, Namor and, Etc. cetera. It really worked. But the Fantastic Four, which is really kind of ground zero for all that, I, I liked the art, but and I liked Galactus and some of the other uh, villains, but I, I, I got kind of bored with uh, uh, the big four and kind of rooted for Doctor Doom to win a lot. Yeah, I, I kind of was in the same boat with them. I, I didn't really jump on that bandwagon. It was it was pretty much like Iron Man, Spider Man, and and and. Hulk and, and Captain America, like mostly the Avengers, you know, so. <laughs> right. And, you know, it, it's funny because I, I, I like the fact that the movies have come out and it really introduced a lot of those old storylines. I think that's I think that's neat. I'm interested in myself to see now that we've kind of gotten past sort of Marvel, uh, it's called phase one with a lot of the storylines and a lot of the old characters uh, and it sort of hit me at a time when I wasn't really following comics as much. I'll be interested to see whether my interest in the movies continues as well uh, as it had in the past. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how they, how they uh, draw attention after they, they end most of the contracts with the old guard uh, with uh, end game. Right. Uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. I mean, at, at a certain point, you know, he's got to, he wants to do other stuff. So, uh, it'll be, it, it, you know, it gets down to sort of that, the, the Spider-Man thing. And, you know, do you start, how do you bring Miles Morales in? Um, and where does that fit into things? And that's probably a five years from now issue, but, uh, uh I don't know. We'll see. That's, that's why they write the movies. Yep. Make the big bucks. <laughs> Uh, so what what are some other projects that you have have coming up uh, aside from the the graphic novel and and whatnot? Yeah, so the graphic novel we talked about that. Uh, the movie, the restaurant that's coming out that's going to be uh, in DVD in March. Uh, that's going to be I, I it's it's been shot, it's ready to go, a lot of fun, um, and I the acting's really good. Basically, what happens in the restaurant is uh, a restaurant owner in New York, uh, which is about the, the most competitive business environment you could possibly have in the most competitive business you could possibly have, uh, ends up 
selling his uh, soul to demons in order for his restaurant to succeed. And so we, uh, that's the premise of the movie. Uh, we got some great actors in it. Uh, Eric Ford Holvinsky and Chris Max are the main driving forces behind it. And, uh, I think it turned out really well. So I'm excited for that to come out. Um, Let's see what else have I got on my plate. Those are sort of the the big sort of super creative ones. Again, my book, uh, Wealth Actually, which isn't uh, not really comic book uh, material, but it was a lot of fun to write and hopefully, you know, uh, fun and a a little bit glib and uh, with some funny anecdotes that came out in August. And that's on Amazon right now, amongst other, uh, you know, all the other uh, places you get books and. Uh, it's been exciting. I've gone out and had to do a lot of podcasts and media and things like that. And so that's been a lot of fun. So how can the listeners get a hold of you if they'd like to find out more about you uh, and your your books and, and, and whatnot? Great. Uh, so you can find out about me a couple of different ways or lots of different ways. Um, so I have a website, FraserRice.com, and that's F-R-A-Z-E-R-R-I-C-E.com. I'm on Facebook and Twitter, and my Twitter handle is uh, at Fraser Rice. And uh, Wealth Actually, which is the book uh, around the wealth management aspect, that has its own site. That's at wealthactually.com uh, and any of those types of things. If you Google Fraser Rice, there aren't many of them around, so you'll, you'll be able to find me pretty quickly. Yeah, very, very unique name. I'm like, if you, you Google my name, there's like 50. Well, the, yeah, and the crazy part too. So when my parents were naming me, uh, it was down to two. There was Fraser, which is odd enough, but then the other one, which was another family name, was Persifer. And if I had been named Persifer, I'd have ended up being a very tough kid. <laughs> uh, certainly Percy for short, or I may have gone straight to the middle name. Uh, but the but the end note on it is that Persifer, my sister, ended up using the name as the uh, the name of her dress line. So she started a, uh, a dress business that's been going strong for seven years, and it's called Persifer. So out of out of all the craziness, sometimes you get some good stuff. That, that's definitely awesome that that family is able to still use a family idea. Yeah, well, <laughs> at least it's something. <laughs> it isn't Rockefeller or Carnegie, unfortunately. So, <laughs> but it could uh, be. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> if I sell some screenplays or do some more comics, maybe we get toward that. So, well, thank you uh, for taking the time out of out of your your busy schedule to to come hang out with us here on Alter Geek and kind of uh, tell everybody what you're working on and uh, uh, to promote your your upcoming. Uh, movie and, and graphic novel. Well, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, when it, everything comes out, I'd love to hear what you think about it. And, uh, you know, when you've got some stuff ready to roll, let me know. You can be on my podcast. Definitely, definitely. So thank you again. And until next time, get altered, get geeky with the altered geeks. 